In this and the next episode we will add another highly requested feature and that is a storage system for our player. To get started let's go to our BP inventory and we will need to add some new functions here. First one will be called add item to index and it will have three inputs. First one will be the index obviously which will be an integer. The third one will be an integer as well and that will be the amount. And the second one will be the item class which will be a bp underscore master item class. Then let's also create an output called success which will be a boolean. And first off let's drag off of the index and search for is empty slot or is slot empty it's called. Then search for and and the next condition will be that the amount is less than or equal to the maximum stack size. Connect that to the end and off of the end search for branch and connect to the execution. If it's false we will return unsuccessful but if it's true let's drag in our slots and set array element split the struct pin here the index will come from our input node as well as the item class and the amount after that we will call the add weight for item function item class comes from our in item class again and amount from our in amount and then we also need to update the slot at index. Index will again come from our input node. After that we will return with true. Compile and save. Before we create the next function let's actually add a variable here and that will be called storage open question mark and that will be a boolean that we will need later on. Then the next function will be called increase amount at index. Here we need some inputs as well. First the index which will be an integer. The next one also an integer will be the amount by which it will be increased. Same as we always do create an output which will be a boolean called success question mark. Let's move that over a bit. First off we will check for is empty but this time we want to check that it's not empty so add a not boolean then add an end boolean and for the next condition we will check off of the index get amount at index plus the amount from our input node we will have to check that this value is less than or equal to the maximum stack size. Connect that to the end and off of the end search for branch. If it's false again return with false but if it's true means that we can add something so we will get our slots, get from it and also set array element then connect the index for the get node and for the set array element node. Let's split the struct pin here again and split the struct pin of the get node. Then we can connect the item class. For the amount of the set array element node we will get our amount from the slots array and add to it the amount from our input node. Connect that to the true. After that, add weight for item. Connect the item class from our get node here. And the amount comes from our input node. Finally, update the slot index again from our input node. Connect it and afterwards return with successful. Now we can close the BP inventory 
and we will have to duplicate that for our storage. So right click, duplicate, call that bp underscore storage. Let's open that up and let's delete everything here at event begin play. Let's delete the use item at index down here. And we will keep the update slot at index event, but let's just disconnect it here. So we need to change that later. You can also delete the update slot node and the get nodes here. Just keep the event. We won't need all of these functions, so we can delete some of them. First off, let's go to our add item function. We can remove that one. Then go to our add item internal function, make that public and we can right click rename it and call it our normal add item function because we will not need to show any notifications so we can use our internal function as the normal one again then delete the show obtained item we won't need to split something so split stack to index will go split stack will go show inventory and hide inventory we can remove Remove the add weight, update weight, remove weight, compare strings, add weight for item, remove weight for item, get total amount of item, update crafting menu, save inventory, contains ID, load pickup actors, load inventory, and finally bubble sort array, filter empty slots, and sort array. You can also delete the remove item function here. We will not need that. Alright, now you should only have 11 functions left. Also, we won't need some of the variables here. Delete the overloaded, overloaded cap and current weight. Then the show obtained message, obtained visible duration, the unlocked craftable items, pickups, save game object, storage open, is visible, main widget, inventory widget. Let's compile and we will get some errors here. So, click on one of them first one here. Yeah, in the add item function, let's delete everything for the remove weight here. Also, the update crafting menu will go away. Here we have another remove weight for item node, so remove that and connect the faults to the rest path here. Then compile again and click on the next arrow here. That is in our add item to index function, so remove the add weight there. And the last one is in the increase amount at index function. Remove it there, connect the path. Now when you compile and save, everything should be working. You can close the BP storage now and head over to our widgets folder. In here we will right click on the merchant text and duplicate that. Call that our chest text that we will need later. Open that. And the merchant will be chest now. Maybe change the color to blue or something. And press E to open the shop will now be press E to open the storage. Compile and save. Next one will be the inventory slot. Duplicate that and call that our storage slot. Double click and head over to the graph. Add another variable and that will be the storage reference. Variable type will be storage. Now we have to replace our inventory reference for our newly created storage reference. So here so sure is slot empty, delete the old one, connect the empty to the branch and the slot index to the index. Then we can remove the inventory reference here. Then down here we call the function get item info at index. This time drag in the storage reference again, call get item info at index, remove the old one, connect the item info, the amount and the slot index, then we can remove the inventory reference. That should be everything for the event graph. Let's go to our drag and drop on drop. Let's delete everything in here. And 
for now let's just connect the on drop to the return value compile and save then let's go to text amount visibility binding and here drag in the storage reference says for is slot empty remove the old one connect the boolean to the branch and connect the slot index then remove the inventory reference also on mouse button double click let's remove the use item at index function here for now then delete the inventory reference just connect the true to the return value go to our on drag detected and let's just delete the inventory reference here and delete the create item drag just go to the return node finally in on mouse button down remove the on slot clicked here and just connect the true to the return value. Compile, save, and now we should be able to delete our inventory reference without any errors. Let's close it for now and duplicate the inventory widget. Call that our storage widget. Double click. Let's delete the border down here with the weight and the gold. Then delete the action menu delete the sort type box, the size box for it, and the sort button. Then modify the inventory text to say storage, pile and save. Head over to the graph, delete everything on event construct, delete the on click close button. Let's keep the on slot clicked event but remove everything behind that. And for the slot, we will change the variable type to storage slot reference. Finally, delete everything for our sort button. We won't need the slots per row, so delete that. The inventory reference here will become a BP storage reference. Change the variable type. Then we will add another variable that will be the player inventory. And now that one will be a BP underscore inventory reference. Select the slot widgets, change the variable type to storage slot reference, change variable type. Now let's hit compile and save. And let's go to the generate slot widgets function. And we will add an input, which will be the storage. So every time we generate the slots, we will ask for the storage reference that we created for. So that will be a BP storage reference. By the way, call the inventory now our storage. And what we'll do is get the storage, check for is valid. If it's not valid, we will set it to the incoming storage and proceed. But if it is valid, we will check whether the incoming storage equals our current storage. Then hold B left click for a branch. Connect that to the is valid. If that's true, we will just return. But if not, we will go to the set storage Compile and save. Now here we will need to drag off of our slot widgets because we changed the variable type. Search for clear. Connect that to the clear children. Then connect it to the for each loop. And for the array of the for each loop we will get the storage. Get the slots. Connect that. Then remove the create inventory slot. And search for create widget because we will create a storage slot. By the way, let's go back to our storage slot and make sure that the storage reference is editable and exposed on spawn. Then compile, save and back to the storage widget. Connect that to the loop body. Connect our storage to the storage reference. Slot index will come from our array index off of the slot widgets, search for add, connect the return value, connect that to the execution, then get the return value here, connect that to the content. Finally, remove the update slot at the end here, 
drag off of the return value once again, search for update slot. Remember that we removed the slots per row variable, so now we have to drag off of the storage, get the slots per row, connect that to the integer here, onto the device. Now when it's completed, we will return. All right, that's it for our generate slot widgets function. Let's actually close the storage widget and the storage slots. And we will now open up the main widget to put our storage inside of that. So on the user created, you will have to scroll down. Under S, there is our storage widget. Drag that into the canvas. And let's just call that our storage. Then anchor it to the lower left corner. Check size to content. Maybe increase the Z order to 10. Set its visibility to hidden by default. Then for the alignment in Y, type in 1. Position in X will be 50, if you want yours to look exactly like mine. And position in Y, minus 170 worked for me. Now hop over to the event graph. and. On event construct, when we set all of the inventory reference here, maybe after we initialize the crafting menu, let's get the storage set inventory, set player inventory, and we will set it to our inventory reference. Compile and save. Now let's go to the blueprints, right click, and create a new class that will be the BP underscore chest that will contain our storage, double click and in here we will add a cube select the cube and make it look somewhat like a chest, give it a scale of 2.5 in X let's also rotate that by 90 degrees in Z so it will face the player when we place it in the level later on add a component and this time it will be a widget component call that our chest text space will be screen widget class will be chest text y size will be 200 just like we did with our merchant then search for is visible uncheck the visible and let's move that up in z to 120 maybe. Compile and save and let's add some variables. First one will be the amount of slots for that chest and that will be an integer. Editable and exposed on spawn. Compile and save. Next one will be slots per row. Also an integer and editable and exposed on spawn. Then we will need a reference to our storage actor which will be a BP storage reference. Finally, we will need a reference to our top-down char. That will be a top-down character reference. Compile, save, and let's put the chest somewhere in our level. Maybe here. Before you finish off, let's make sure that you set the default values here. Amount of slots, maybe 40. And slots per row you can set to five so we will have eight rows with five slots on each all right that's it for the first part of the implementation video for a storage system in the next one we will add the actual functionality to move items from the inventory to our storage actor and to open the storage so see you then